This is the PC that I built for Unreal Engine 5. Compared to buying this same PC pre-built, I saved at least $2,000, and I got some free video games thrown in, <laughs> some extra perks, and I'm gonna show you how I built it and saved that money in doing so. It's got top-of-the-line specs, 16-core, processor amd it's got an rtx 4090 with 24 gigs of vram it's got 64 gigs of ram it's got two one terabyte m.2 ssds for super fast read and writes a massive all-in-one liquid cooler for the cpu and the motherboard even has 10 gigabit ethernet capability built right into it so that uh, for super fast networking, so I can plug it into my NAS. The PC was purpose built for Unreal Engine, but it is also a beast for other graphically intense use cases, such as gaming or video editing. So if those are more your speed, then uh, you'll get just as much value from watching this video as somebody like myself who wants to build a PC from the ground up for the purpose of Unreal Engine. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to keep tea anywhere near an open computer, so I'm going to put that under. Though I will be talking specifically about the components I'm using, and you might be watching this at some point in the future when there's new stuff, uh, new pieces... The principles and concepts that I'm gonna be discussing will still apply to you because I'm gonna be talking about how and why I chose the parts I did. I'm also going to talk about the problems I ran into and how you can avoid them. Uh, problems arose during the building, during updating the motherboard BIOS, and during installing Windows 11 operating system. First, how did I choose these components? I watched Unreal Engine demos, and I listened to the specifications of the computers that they were using specifically for those demos. I also spoke with an Unreal Engine developer who works with MetaHuman, and I looked at pre-built PCs from uh, pre-building companies such as Puget Systems specifically for high-end Unreal Engine. I studied all of their CPU benchmarks and all of their GPU benchmarks. Those specifically led me to settling on this CPU and this GPU, the RTX 4090 by NVIDIA. I'm gonna be making film content in Unreal Engine, cinematic content, and I wanna be able to capture in real time 60 frames per second reliably, and I wanna have that delicious real-time ray-traced lighting and super high-resolution textures. The, the GPU came out on top of all of the benchmarks on Unreal Engine across the board. The CPU came out on top of most of them for different programs and different use cases, came out on top for Unreal Engine, importantly. And that led me to, well, what does Puget recommend for a motherboard with these components? And that is the ASUS ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi, which is made for AMD chipsets. It's got a lot of I.O. ports. Importantly for me, 10 gigabit Ethernet, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet as well. Uh, wireless Bluetooth. It has three PCIe expansion slots. Only one is being used right now for the graphics card, and the graphics card is so big that it covers the other fast PCIe expansion slot. It's also got four M.2 slots for internal hard drives. There four DDR5 DIMM slots uh, for RAM. For those uh, M.2 SSDs, I went for what Puget was recommending. Sabrent Rockets, one terabyte each. Sabrent Rocket 4 plus NVMe PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSDs, the 2280 size. And then the case also Puget's recommendation, uh, Fractal designed to find seven mid tower. Power supply unit, a Seasonic TX850, 850 watt power supply with an 80 plus platinum rating, comes with 12 year manufacturer warranty. So I personally went for 64 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM instead of 5600 megahertz RAM, which is what Puget that was their base recommendation. Depending on where you buy it, you can get them for approximately around the same price. So 
performance wise it would have been better if I had done what Puget was doing but the one thing that Puget doesn't specify is what manufacturer of RTX 4090. Um, NVIDIA is the person who creates the GPU chip the NVIDIA RTX 4090 but then they have various manufacturers actually make the graphics cards that's why there's so many different types of RTX 4090s and essentially what I learned is they're all relatively the same it's just they have different they look different they have different heat sinks different fans different RGB if you want RGB lighting as you can tell I went for a very sleek black look um, when when you have the uh, the cover on <laughs> You can't see in there. I don't care about RGB. I don't need my computer to look like a, a rave. I found this MSI Supreme X. It ended up saving me money because you have to look closely. These RTX 4090s that have RGB enabled, um, they all recommend that you have a 1000 watt power supply unit. Uh, I don't know if that's really just because they have RGB in connected to them so there's a little bit more wattage needed to run the RGB but this is rated for an 850 watt power supply unit the p power supply is like $200 less than a 1000 watt power supply and I actually like the way this one looks a lot better it's just it's more gunmetal and chrome and angular and sexy in my opinion I don't need RGB it actually has lights on it so you know that it's running when it's powered up but they're not all colorful. If you uh, take a whole bunch of RTX 4090s that are available on BNH and you compare them, this is the only one with a higher core clock and a overclocking speed listed. This one actually has higher specs than the other RTX 4090s. Cooling for the CPU. I opted for Noctua's thermal paste. They're the best. Puget recommends the Noctua NH-U12A, which is a $120 heat sink with fans. Uh, heat is the is the enemy of all things computer and I went with a all-in-one liquid cooler I did an Arctic liquid cooler mark II, uh 420 millimeter that's gonna lead us to our first mistake and our first problem that needed to be solved in the documentation for the case it said the maximum size you can fit is three 140 millimeter fans and when I was looking at this cooler I thought that because it has three 140 millimeter fans, oh, it's gonna fit. But you have to account for the fact that the radiator is always gonna be bigger than the fans connected to it. And I, I've never done this before, so I, I did not. It will not fit inside the PC unless I do some creative workarounds, but you don't really have to have it fit. And I realized that you can mount it on top and it's just fine. The fans are still sucking a lot of air out of the uh, PC case. There's, they're not impeded at all. It's meant to be mounted to the bottom of this piece. I just mounted it to the top. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more beefy. So I've got four exhaust fans total, one here and these three here. And then I've got um, four intake fans one, two, three, four. I bought two extra Noctua fans, the largest size you can fit in here. All of my fans are 140 millimeters, including these top three. This system would be $6,000 before tax and before shipping from Puget. Yeah, without peripherals, I saved over $2,000 on getting the exact same spec. Better cooler. And I got it all within like two days free shipping, which was kind of mind blowing. Even with the monitor, keyboard, all the peripherals, I saved over a thousand dollars. Plus Puget can take over two weeks to ship. B&H was two days for most things. The reason I went with B&H is they have a credit card that if you purchase using their credit card, they pay the sales tax for you and you get free shipping. It took me about two days all put together to build the whole thing and install Windows. I did it over five days because I didn't spend eight hours each day. I spent a couple hours each day over five days building and I filmed it. Uh, it might go even faster for you. The, the real point here is like, go look at what a pre-built PC place is vouching for. It is the configuration they have tested rigorously and they're willing to sell to people and then figure out if you can get those components yourself and if you're willing to you know take the risk of building it yourself and the time it's going to take i think it's worth it 
Before being confident to purchase the components, I checked all of them on PC Part Picker and I calculated my power draw on a various power supply unit calculating websites. I, I made sure to add in extra fans and extra hard drives to my calculation so that I could make sure that 850 watts was gonna be fine. Once I was confident that I'd chosen the right components, I pulled the trigger. I saved a lot of money. But is it worth the building it process? How did it go? There were some rookie mistakes. There were some problems that arose. The first one is that I ordered the wrong type of RAM. I ordered laptop sized RAM, which is SODIMS instead of LDIMS, which are for full size motherboards, desktop computers. They're the same exact price, same exact spec. It's just the moment I opened it up, I realized, oh shit. So I had to send that back and get the right RAM. So the next big problem I ran into was updating the BIOS for the motherboard. And that has to be updated sometimes in order to be compatible with newer operating systems such as Windows 11. In order to update the BIOS, you have to, you know, plug a thumb drive in with the BIOS file that you download from the internet. It's a fairly straightforward process, but the hitch was, I called ASUS, the tech support, and the first person I talked to said, this uh, BIOS that you need to download, you have to download it from a PC. You can't download it from a Mac. And you have to put it on a thumb drive using a PC. You can't do it with a Mac. So I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so I had a friend download the BIOS and put it on the thumb drive and you have to rename the file and supposedly you can only do that on a PC. But it turns out after I went through that whole process and that friend, thank you very much, Jay Stoneburner for, for doing that. And then the next day when I'm getting the BIOS updated, I'm talking to a different tech and they said, of course you can use a Mac. Why wouldn't you be able to? And so two different texts have two different opinions and it's like, come on, get on the same page guys. And then the next big hurdle, basically the same thing happened, but with Windows. When I was trying to install Windows 11 with the thumb drive that I bought from Windows and they sent me with Windows 11, the tech who you, you can't talk to them on the phone, by the way, it's only chat, which is really annoying, said your motherboard is not compatible with Windows 11. My new awesome motherboard, that Puget will install Windows 11 on if you buy from Puget. Windows is telling me my motherboard is not compatible. And then of course, ASUS, the people who manufacture the motherboard are like, they don't know what they're talking about. And in fact, it was. While you're installing Windows 11, unless you wanna get technical and do command line codes and stuff, you actually have to have your computer connected to the internet so that you can log into your Windows account. But the problem is, by default, I don't have the LAN driver, meaning the ethernet driver, installed on the motherboard or the Wi-Fi driver. Basically, you download the driver onto a thumb drive on a separate computer. I did that on my Mac this time, even though the documentation says do it on a PC. And then I plug it into the back of the computer and I install it during the Windows install process. So the Windows install process has a screen where you can install drivers. So I installed the LAN driver, which allowed me to connect to the internet and boom, Bob's your uncle. Everything worked from there. And now honestly, I'm super happy. It just runs smooth. Unreal Engine is fast, you know, just running in extremely high frame rates buttery smooth, the ray trace lighting looks amazing, Nanite looks amazing. That's why I sprung for the 4090 and the top of the line gaming CPU and this whole system writ large. And so I'm super happy about it. And if you have any questions about the build or the components, um, let me know. I'm gonna do some more like benchmarking and stuff. Right now it's just very unofficial. I've just been messing around in Unreal. I've made my first game, my first blueprint, my first environments. So to wrap it up, like, is it worth building your own PC? I totally think so. Uh, if you've spent a lot of time around computers or gaming or whatever, you know, if you're fairly proficient with technology or if you're cool with just getting on the phone with Asus and then Windows and then whomever, whatever manufacturer, and just having them walk you through the process because 
they will. I mean, they were on the phone with me for hours while I was just step by step being super cautious in the BIOS update and the Windows install. I just kept them on the line. Um, you know, it sucked in the moment and I was kind of peeved about it, but looking back on it, it really only took me a matter of days to do it and I learned a lot. So I know more about PCs and I'm more confident in the process now. So it was total net positive. Um, it's good to learn. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have any of these components? Do you have any questions? And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. I enjoyed making this, had a lot of fun. Thanks for being here. We are making a short horror film in Unreal Engine using this beast of a PC. The horror film is based on my novel, Northport 1999. We are currently hosting open auditions. Go to northportstory.com forward slash audition or go to the link in the description. We got at least six voice acting roles open to any level of experience. So go check it out. Just because I decided to look at Puget.com and see what components they used and then purchase them myself and take the risk of building it myself does not mean I'm throwing any shade at Puget. I think the premium of paying for them to pre-build your PC is probably worth it for the vast majority of professionals and enterprise level users when you just need your PC to work and you need to be able to count on it day in and day out and if something goes wrong you need to be able to get service from a reliable provider and if that's you good for you that was not in the budget for me so I decided I would at least look at what Puget recommended for components and use them as a gold standard and do my best to uh, build it myself.